humor has to be relatable, feminist. It has to exist in reality. You can't just make shit up, damn it. <laughs> okay, now it's time for everyone's favorite series, Try to Laugh, where I, I watch feminist comedians and try to find a joke, any joke that's worthy of, of, of laughter. Now, I say that this is everyone's favorite series, but I should say everyone minus one because it's not really my own favorite. Right now, I'm acting like this is fun. This series, for me, has been a source of great sorrow and suffering and pain uh, on a personal level that I've inflicted on myself. Don't try to stop me. So anyway, so far to recap, we have um, watched and failed to laugh at Samantha B, Hannah Gadsby, Chelsea Handler, and uh, the other one, I forget her name. <laughs> it's been a murderer's row of shrill, unfunny harpies. I'm hoping that today we finally find a funny feminist comedian. I'm feeling pretty good about it. We now turn to Ali Wong. Okay, Ali Wong is, according to Wikipedia, an American comedian, actress, and writer. She is noted for her Netflix stand-up specials, Baby Cobra and Hard Knock Wife, both of which received critical acclaim. Critical acclaim. That's a good, that's a good sign. That makes me optimistic. Surely the critics would never acclaim something that is bad. So today we're gonna we're gonna try to do this. We're gonna make it easy. Netflix themselves on YouTube has compiled uh, on their channel a video, which they say is the best, the very best of Ali Wong. And uh, we'll start with that. Let's watch. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but I am seven and a half months pregnant. Yeah. It's. Very rare and unusual to see a female comic perform pregnant because female comics don't get pregnant. <laughs> Just try to think of one, I dare you. There, there's none of them. Once they do get pregnant, they generally disappear. That's not the case with male comics. Once they have a baby, they'll get up on stage a week afterwards, and they'll be like, guys, I just had this baby. That baby's a little piece of shit. It's so annoying and boring, and all these other dads in the audience are like, that's hilarious. I identify, and their fame just swells because they become this relatable family funny man all of a sudden. Meanwhile, the mom is at home, chapping her nipples, feeding the baby, and wearing a frozen diaper because her needs to heal from the baby's head, shredding it up. She's busy. This is the best of Ali Wong, right? Let me check again. Was it the worst? No, 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 it's the best. Okay, all right, look. Uh, well, first of all, I, you know, I have watched a lot of male comics in my day, and many of them you know, make jokes about parenthood, fatherhood. I have never heard any of them say, my baby is a little piece of shit. I have, I've never, maybe Louis C.K. has come the closest to that kind of thing, but generally this is not something that male comics are saying. And I know it's a joke. You could say, well, she's just making a joke. But in order for jokes to be funny, it has to bear some relation to things that really occur in the real world. Otherwise, it's not funny. Y you see? Second, this woman is literally just screaming at the audience, and she seems like she's going to cry. And the thing is, that should be funny, right? There's, it's, it's, it is very funny, and it's one of my favorite pastimes is to, is to uh, laugh at feminists as they scream and cry. It's a very, very funny sight. <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate it as much as the next guy, believe me. But um, somehow, this one is doing it, and she's a comedian. And yet, she's failing to be funny in the process. It's kind of amazing, in fact. It's so sexist when people ask me, well, if you're here, then who's taking care of the baby? <laughs> <laughs> Who the f do you think is taking care of the baby? <laughs> the TV is taking care of the baby, okay? <laughs> I'm just waiting for the right moment to like become a housewife financially, you know? I want my husband to get us to like a certain point financially. I want to get to the point as a couple where I can comfortably afford sliced mango. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm talking about that Whole Foods mango, that $10 a box Whole Foods mango that was sliced by white people. That's the kind of income bracket I'm striving for. 
That's when you know you've made it. When you're eating mango that was sliced by a dude named Noah. I want Noah mango, <laughs> Rebecca Kiwi, Danielle pineapple. I have to admit that this joke, in its specificity, is going over my head a little bit. And I, I, you know, I've been inside a, a Whole Foods maybe twice in my entire life. I'm also not a big mango guy, so I'm not familiar with the mango culture. Tommy needs a mango. Maybe if you're a big Whole Foods fan and an avid mango enthusiast, this material is just killer. Maybe This is the best of Ali Wong, the, the bit about mangoes. And maybe if you're a big mango person, you, you've never heard anything funnier than this. It's possible. That's possible. But the game here is to make me laugh, and uh, I am not laughing, sadly. If you are hiring a 25-year-old pretty young thing to be your nanny, you a dumbass. <laughs> Do you not read People Magazine? You don't know what's up? That's inviting a marriage grenade into your home. <laughs> When you have a newborn baby, your marriage is very weak because you're both stressed out. You look like because you don't shower no more. You're resentful of each other. Whose idea was it to bring this new roommate into the world? <laughs> your marriage is very vulnerable and easy for an outsider to invade and colonize. <laughs> if we had hired a 25-year-old man, who was not ugly. <laughs> Great with my daughter and said yes immediately to every chore I asked him to do with a positive attitude. <laughs> oh, you best believe that I would eat the sh out of his butthole. So I'm glad we could hear this. Well, glad is a strong word, maybe a wrong word. More, um... I think you're about one step away from cutting your f***ing ear off. Repulsed, probably is what I'm going for. Wishing that I had woken up this morning with catastrophic hearing loss, so I wouldn't have had to hear any of that. There's probably more of what I'm feeling. But since we're here, this is a learning opportunity, and this is exactly why so many female comedians are frankly really, really terrible. It's because they're so impressed with their own vulgarity, right? They're so impressed with the fact that, uh, that they can say bad words. And, and so they think the audience is just going to laugh at the vulgarity itself and ju just for its own sake. Unfortunately, as this audience proves, some people, especially those with IQs, uh, around the same vicinity as say, you know, a small woodland creature, like squirrel level IQ people, they actually will laugh at the very fact that a woman said, a, said something dirty. You know, that lady say naughty word, me laugh, it funny. Naughty word, funny. Like that's, that's the, the, the thought process for the morons in the audience there. But for the more discerning comedy audience, that's not enough of a punchline. We need you to actually say something that is funny. We need the vulgarity in a funny context. And the sad thing is, in this case, she was actually setting up, maybe, it's like she was getting ready, maybe, to, to say something funny and poignant, but at the very last moment, right on the cusp of almost saying something clever and witty, she veered right into a butthole, and, uh, w which is not where you want to be. So we got so close, ended up in the butthole. Let's keep watching. Every day. Every day would be an all-day nanny butthole buffet. Okay, we're still talking about buttholes here. Let's um, let's try to move on. We're going to try to get past. There's there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of the butthole material, by the way. We're going to try to move past it and uh, get somewhere else. And we'll try. Uh, we'll try here. Let's listen. I have been ruminating a lot over this one time I hooked up with this dude, and in the middle of kissing, I felt the responsibility to stop and say, "Hey." I should really let you know now, before we go any further, that I'm on my period. <laughs> and he was like, oh, well, then let's make a mess, Allie. <laughs> To this 
day, that is the most romantic thing anybody has ever said to me. I'm so regretting uh, my life choices as always when we do these things. We've gone from buttholes to periods. Yeah, let's go. I'm so nasty. She's got the scatological humor down. Not the humor part necessarily, but she's got scatological. She's got that part. Like she, she's figured out how to talk about those topics. She hasn't figured out how to say anything funny about her bodily functions, but she can talk about them. She's noticed that she has bodily functions and she can say a lot of stuff about it. So she's got that at least. You got to give her that, right? And by the way, humor is all about subverting expectations. It's all about, uh, you know, giving us the unexpected, coming at something from a different angle. But with this joke, like, like always, you knew exactly where it was going. You knew exactly what she was going to say. You know the punchline, if we can even call it that. And that's the problem with, with almost all feminist comedy. I know exactly where it's going. And most of the time, it's going into the pants somewhere. And finding nothing funny to talk about down there. Against all odds. For some reason, we're going to keep watching clips. Let's continue. When my husband and I were trying to have a kid, a lot of people were like, oh my God, that's so hot. You guys doing a lot of f***ing? No, dude, that's that's you do in your 20s. Okay, uh, just, n- no, they didn't, nobody said that to you, ever. That definitely didn't, that's not what anyone says. Liter- not one person ever in history has responded that way to the news that someone is trying to have a baby. There's never been a time, you know, when, when you say, I'm trying to have a baby, and the other person goes, oh, God, that's so hot. If someone said that to you, you'd be like, what? Dude, are you, are you what kind of per- pervert are you? Get the hell out of my house. I never should have invited you to Thanksgiving. That's the way it would go. But it doesn't go that way because that's, that never happens. And you see, you see, humor has to be relatable, feminist. It has, to, it has to exist in reality. You can't just make shit up, damn it. It's frustrating to me. Say something that, that is related to the world that we live in. Can you do that? Killing me with this. I don't want to live anymore. Okay. Keep going. When you're in your 30s and you've been trying to get pregnant for a while, it gets very clinical. You pee on these ovulation strips that tell you when the eggs are dropping. It tells you when it's Easter time. <laughs> and I would only f*** him when it was Easter time. Okay, I, you know, I'm really wondering if this woman has any jokes at all that, first of all, are jokes. And second, that have anything to do with any topic other than her having sex with guys. Maybe it's just at this point, she just, the idea is to spew out hours and hours of sex jokes, hoping that as a matter of sheer statistical probability, one of them will eventually be funny, but it's not working. So let's skip ahead and see, we're almost at the end of the video. Is there, will, will we ever get to another topic? Let's, uh, let's keep watching. And then I would jump on him and hold onto his neck and I would just twerk, twerk, twerk the sh- out of him. Do some of this shit that I learned in Atlanta. Ha, 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 ha. No, that's it. That's really it. It's, uh, that's, that, that's, that's actually all she has. That's the entire montage of the best of this woman, and that's all it is. I have to say, you know what? I, honestly, watching this, this is the overwhelming feeling that I have. I feel deeply, deeply sad. I really do. I'm, I'm really sad right now. Like, have you ever had the experience where you're, you see someone out in public and maybe some sort of lonely looking person eating alone at a restaurant or something on a Friday night and you, you get this sense of pity? Just it, it's, it, it, it overcomes you and you see this person, you feel, you feel so sorry for them and you don't even know them. You want to walk up to them and pat them on the shoulder and say, it's going to be okay, buddy. It's going to be okay. But you don't do that because you know that it would, you know, they would probably look at you like you're insane and then say something like, dude, my wife is just in the bathroom. She'll be back in a second. What are you doing, you weirdo? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe you don't know. Maybe this is my mango at Whole Foods moment where this is totally unrelatable to you. But anyway, I almost, here's my point. I almost get that sense um, with Ali Wong here. Almost. Except that my pity is mixed with revulsion and annoyance. And what I really want to do is, is instead is walk up to her and pat her on the shoulder and say, Ali, Please shut the hell up. You're really annoying and you're embarrassing yourself. None of this is funny. 
I'm sure you have talents. I'm, I'm sure you do. Comedy is not one of them. That's a talk she needs from someone, an intervention that she needs. Maybe this video will do it. Maybe that's, uh, maybe I'll have done some good in, in the world, turn this tragedy into a triumph in a certain way. But what I can't do is turn it into comedy because there's no humor here. There's only sadness and desperation and buttholes. A lot of those.